Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Pete and I am a behavioral scientist and I've also given a lot of presentations in my time. For me, my skills in presenting and public speaking started in high school where I was elected as one of the head prefects of the school and in that role, I would give presentations on an almost weekly basis in front of hundreds of other students and teachers. I continued developing my public speaking skills in A-levels while I was in the school debating team and basically competing in public speaking. And then when I went to university, I continued developing my public speaking and presenting skills by of course giving presentations as part of my degree where I always got a first during the whole four years of my education. And even outside of the university as part of the Warwick Behavioral Insights team, I'd give lots of talks on campus to lecturers and students and over the last year since starting this YouTube channel people have asked me to speak at their school at universities or even at online conferences and so I say all of this not to brag but just to convey to you that by this point I am a very confident and well experienced public speaker and so I wanted to make this video to help some people who maybe don't feel so confident when it comes to public speaking and presenting and give you some of the tips that I've learned over the years that I think can really help everyone give excellent presentations every single time. Now, because I am a behavioral scientist and a psychologist, I tend to analyze everything through the lens of psychology and behavioral science. And so I'm going to be linking the advice I give you today to the actual psychology behind it. So hopefully you find this video interesting and useful. Let's jump into it. Okay, so the first tip is a general one, which is just to reduce the cognitive load of your presentation. Cognitive load is just a fancy behavioral science term, which basically means how hard your brain has to work in order to do the task that you're doing. You can think of cognitive load on a spectrum. Think of like Fermat's last theorem, a really hard maths problem. That's like very high cognitive load. You have to think really hard to solve that kind of problem. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have something like breathing, right? Most of the time we're totally unaware that we're even breathing. It's totally automatic. That's one of the most extreme low cognitive load tasks that you have to do. Now, when you're giving a presentation, you want to be more towards the breathing side of that spectrum than towards the hard maths problem side because, well, giving a presentation is stressful, right? Standing in front of a lot of people and talking to them all looking at you is pretty scary. And what we know from psychology is that when people are stressed, brain activity moves away from the prefrontal cortex to other parts of the brain. And that prefrontal cortex, well, that's the part that's more to do with that hard maths problem, that difficult thinking. And so when you're in that stressful situation, giving your presentation, it's actually very hard for you to think clearly. And so you don't want to be thinking hard during the presentation. So how do you reduce cognitive load? Well, let me give you a few tips. So the first tip is so obvious, it's almost not worth mentioning, but I think it is worth mentioning because I know a lot of people don't do it. And that is just to practice your speech. Practicing your speech, just like revising for an exam, helps commit that speech to memory better. If you have a strong memory of how that speech goes in your head, it's going to reduce the amount of effort that your brain has to go to in order to deliver that speech eloquently. So try to get some practices in, at least do three or four run-throughs before you do the main thing, and that'll vastly improve the quality of your presentation. So the next way to reduce the cognitive load of your presentation is to increase the processing fluency of your notes. What that means in practical terms is you want your notes to be extremely clear and easy to read. I'll tell you a story to help illustrate how important this is. So when I was doing debating competitions, the way they work is that they pair you up with somebody else from your team and then you compete together as a pair. I remember during the first few rounds of this competition I was at, my partner was floundering and getting flustered um, and it's because he couldn't read his notes. So while normally in practice he was a very good debater, when it came to the live debate in the competition, for some reason he had changed his pen and he was writing his notes with a very thin biro that didn't stand out from the page that he was reading from. Now, me being the stationary nerd that I am had uniballs. Please stop saying uniball. And while uniball ink is a lot darker, a lot thicker, and it stands out from the page a lot easier. And so I told him, hey, maybe you wanna try writing in a uniball to improve the readability of your notes for the next round. And sure enough, for the next round, we changed the pen, he made the notes in much clearer ink, they were much easier for him to read in the heat of the debate, and he got far less flustered as a result because he knew exactly what his notes said immediately. So the takeaway from this is that if you are going to use notes for your presentation, obviously the best is to not use notes at all and just do it completely from memory, but if you are going to use notes, make sure that they're written in a very clear and easily readable font, because during the heat of the presentation, you don't want to be burying your head in the notes trying to find your place. That is the same reason why you should also not write out your speech exactly word for word on a piece of paper because one, nobody wants to see you just stand on stage with your piece of paper with your head down and just reading the whole thing word for word. That's not an engaging way to present and looks very amateur. Instead, you want to be looking at the audience, engaging with them, and so you want to have very few notes and just have a few talking points instead. Okay, so the next tip is to take advantage of something called 
chunking. Chunking is a concept in behavioral design that says if you split a large task into smaller components, it feels a lot less intimidating. And as you complete each component, it builds confidence and also makes the process feel easier. A good example of chunking is when you log into a website and they ask for your username and password, rather than asking for both username and password on the same page. If they ask you for your username first, approve that, and then on the next page, ask you for your password and then approve that. That feels like a much easier login process, even though in terms of actual activity, it's exactly the same. Now you can apply the same concept of chunking to your presentations. Basically the way you use this insight is you break up your presentation into lots of smaller chunks so that there's kind of like multiple little presentations within one big presentation. This will give you several advantages. The first advantage is that it's easier to remember something in smaller chunks because you have multiple cues that can trigger the next few minutes of your presentation. And so if you end up messing up on one chunk, you can just move on to the next chunk and you know, the audience for the most part will be none the wiser. So for example, in a presentation that I give all the time, which is an introduction to behavioral economics, I have the first part, which is an introduction to the general concepts of behavioral economics and talking about why people are irrational. And then the next four parts is me going through the East framework, which naturally is split into four chunks, the easy, attractive, social, and timely chunks. And so when I give these presentations, I do the introduction, I nail that part, that builds my confidence. And then I move on to the easy part of the presentation. And if I nail that, that builds my confidence, then I move on to the A, S and T and so on. And every time I complete a chunk, it builds my confidence. And also it's easier for me to remember because I have this very clear separated chunked structure to my presentation. Okay, so the next tip is just to dress up and look really good. I think a lot of people underweight how important it is to look good in your presentations, but from behavioral science, we know there's this thing called the halo effect. Now, what the halo effect means in this context is that if you look really good in your presentation, then people are much less likely to judge you harshly. I'm not saying you should do anything drastic, like get big surgeries or something just because you have to give presentations, but you know, there are lots of little things that you can do to dramatically improve your appearance, at least in the short term. You can cut your nails, take a shower, wear nice clothes, do your hair. These things really do make a difference because research shows that when people who look good mess up, they're judged much less harshly than people who look bad. Now, obviously the best outcome is that you just nail the presentation straight off the bat and so your appearance doesn't make much of a difference. But if you do end up messing up at some point in your presentation, which tends to happen to a lot of people, if you look really good, you can benefit from the halo effect. Okay, so the next tip is to finish your presentation strong. I think a lot of people put too much emphasis on the main content of the presentation and they don't focus enough on giving the end of their presentation a really strong punch. Now from behavioral science, there's this concept called the peak end rule, which basically refers to how people remember emotional events. Now, if you think about some presentations that you've watched over the last few years, you probably don't remember much of the actual content of the presentation. Instead, what you really remember is just how that presentation made you feel. Now from research in behavioral science, we know what parts of an experience are most likely to impact people's memory of the event. And so the peak emotional experience tends to be remembered the most. That could be the scariest moment, the saddest moment, the happiest moment, or the funniest moment. But then also the end of an experience is extremely important. How people feel at the end of your presentation will have a big impact on how they remember how the presentation went. And so when you're designing a presentation, really try and finish strong so you can take advantage of how people remember events. Okay, and the final tip is to just not worry too much if you mess up during your presentation. There's something in psychology called the pratfall effect, which shows that when people make small errors, it actually makes them more likable. So if you're giving a presentation and you stumble over your words a bit, or you lose your place a bit, or maybe you have to take a few seconds to remember what's the next thing you have to say, it's actually okay. Don't let it fluster you too much. Don't let it bother you too much because it just makes you more human and actually makes people like you a little bit more. Now, obviously, if the whole thing's a train wreck from start to finish, then, you know, people aren't going to look on that favorably. But as long as the majority of the presentation is like pretty okay and you've only made like, you know, one or two little blunders along the way, it's actually totally fine and maybe even better than being perfect. So that's my final tip and hopefully it takes some of the pressure off you when you have to give a presentation. Do you guys have any more presentation tips? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. There's not one single uniball. <laughs>